Hey guys, back with another video. Um, I just finished up a low development deal uh, for my 284 and now I'm going to do one for my 6PRA. So, starting, uh, starting with some already turned brass, so I'm not going to go through all that again. I showed you how to turn brass a little bit before, so I'm going to assume you already have some fired brass. So I've got some my practice brass here that I have and it's already been fired it's been sitting here and the first thing I do when I start with any kind of fired brass is I run it through my annealer I don't know for me personally one of the most important things of my brass is the neck and without annealing it it just it gets harder and harder and harder every time you shoot it and after three or four firings then it just kind of gets so inconsistent you know you can tell when you're bumping back your shoulders and they start coming out at different places and they're not very consistent and same with the neck itself you got your bushing in there it's supposed to be squeezing it down to the right spot but then you measure it with your calipers and they're all coming out a little different and so that's why I kneel when I first started annealing I didn't have the annealing made perfect because I couldn't afford one, so I made one. I maybe I'll put a link uh, in the description. I used that for a couple of years. Actually, won the nationals using my homemade one. It's a simple little deal you can make for a couple hundred bucks, but it works. It just takes longer. Like everything else, it's more hands-on and it takes longer to get things done. Whereas I wanted to speed the process up, and this annealing made perfect. Just is really quick. You know, you, I don't know if you need a demonstration on this thing, but it's pretty simple. Once you've already analyzed your case, it'll burn up your first case just analyzing it, but it'll give you a code after that. And once you've got your code, which I've got written down right on here, you can just put your code right in. And for me, on this particular one, is 0128. That's what this... Peterson brass would way I've got this neck turned. That's the code they want. So O go to the next one. I don't know what that O one two and eight. Once you push your code in there, it's as simple as using the little shoulder. You put your shoulder on this little piece they give you. You drop it in, hit go, and just that fast, it's all annealed. Now that's hotter than heck, so I don't want to touch it, so I have a little tray here, I just put them on. But simple as that, anneal all my brass, it kind of softens up that all the way, because every time you fire it, for whatever reason, brass gets harder and harder, but if you anneal it, it just brings it back to its original state, where it's soft and works well again keeps all your cases consistent at the same hardness level I guess best way to put it so your necks will be consistent your shoulder bump back will be consistent and everything will just work better so when you're trying to work with trying to get that neck tension exactly right without without annealing it's pretty tough after a few firings I mean unless you want to sit around and turn case necks all the time and have brand new brass all the time which hey teach their own if you want to do that but it's a lot of a lot of money to keep buying brass to not fire it that many times typically brass if you don't load it too hot and it's you know in a comfortable range you can get 20 firings out of a piece of brass I mean depends on your rifle and your load and all that kind of thing but you don't need to have to keep turning case nets all the time so I turn quite a few me I turn uh, about 800 of them that I have for match ready situation type things and then I turn another couple of hundred just to practice with so my match stuff only gets used in the big matches so I don't have to keep returning that once I get some brass that's working really good I can save it out and I turn another set like this to go do my load development with and go do local matches with and uh, just makes everything last a lot longer so I've been using the same brass, I guess, for three years now, I think. So, 
going on four years. So, you know, it's an initial investment, I guess, to buy all that. And I know a lot of guys think I'm crazy for doing it that way, but I do it that way because when I go to like nationals, if you're going to use all one rifle, you're going to need about 400 rounds. And um, I typically like to load at the motel room or something like that. So I bring my powder scale and my lower over press and I'll just seat them all right there. And I can adjust anything that needs to be done. So I like to have them all prepped with primers in them ready to go. And I can adjust each day if I need to. If I see it's gonna be real hot, I can back it off. Or if it's cooler, I can add. Or, you know, I can test the day before the match to see exactly where I wanna be. And, there's a lot of reasons I do it that way, but that's the way I do it. And I know a lot of guys, they just load everything up and go. But I prefer to load there. It gives me something to do in the evening time. You know, there's, you know, just hanging out sometimes with the guys cool too. But if I have everything with me, it doesn't take that long just to see bullets. It doesn't take long. And I know one friend of mine, he loads up all his powder vials ahead of time. So he's got massive amounts of powder vials. He doesn't have to bring a scale. He can just pick whatever load he wants and dump those in his cases and seat them and he's done real quick that way. He doesn't have to measure them out. They're already measured. Um, I don't do it that way because I'm too too lazy to measure out all those powder vials when I'm not exactly sure what load I want. So, But you can do it that way. I know you guys do all kinds of things. Just whatever works for you. I just prefer to bring my scale and, and my uh, my little arbor press and just see them all right there maybe maybe it takes me an hour and I can maybe two hours at most and I can load enough for two days and then you know on the break day I can recheck my touch point and all that kind of thing and get ready for the thousand and I can readjust everything and have it just right for the thousand and so I just do it all on the fly right there at the room but uh, having all your cases done annealed sitting there primed ready to go it makes that a lot easier i know some guys they reload all their ammo every single night down there but i tried that my first year when i was just way too tired i was up till midnight reloading every night and then up and then by the end of the week i was just wore out too tired i couldn't get anything accomplished so i learned first year to prep everything ahead of time and have it ready it just works for me that way but uh yeah, <laughs> and I don't know how many other guys actually do it that way, but I do it that way. A lot of guys don't want to, don't want to prep that much brass, don't want to turn that many necks, don't want to do all that. But I look at everything long term, and you know, figure well, it's good for a few years if I do it that way. I don't keep turning necks. So anyway, this annealer made perfect. It does a good job. A real good job. My handheld annealer that I started with, it did a good job too, but this one is so fast. I mean, I can whip out a hundred of them in no time. I mean, just push the button and three seconds it's done per case and they're ready to go. So it's fed the process, but process up for me because the way I do things, I do everything by hand. I don't have the big fancy auto reloaders and everything, so it takes me just about all day long to do you know, 100 pieces of brass, so uh, this cut that time down quite a bit. I mean, the way I was doing it by hand, it was taking me two and three hours just to, to anneal all the brass, so if everything would get too hot, I have to wait for it to cool down, whereas this thing, it'll do 100 of them without worrying about it, so it sped everything up a lot. But anyway, this will be the first step in uh, my new video series about doing 6PRA. First step is anneal your brass. Make sure everything's annealed and it help all your bullet releases and neck tensions and shoulder back and bump backs, all that stuff will be way more consistent. That's enough, thanks.